Hello and welcome to the Minimum Competence episode for Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023. I'm your host for today, Andrew Leahy, a tax and technology attorney from New Jersey. In today's episode, we have a Senate panel on SCOTUS ethics attended by zero SCOTUS justices, Gilead v. the U.S. government in a patent suit, column Tuesday on cash ports and potential trouble for J.P. Morgan vis-a-vis Jeffrey Epstein. Let's do this thing where do is read and thing is today's legal news. A Senate panel is set to hold a hearing on Tuesday to scrutinize ethics concerns relating to U.S. Supreme Court justices following revelations about luxury trips and real estate transactions involving members of the nation's top judicial body. None of the nine justices will appear at the hearing, but lawyers and academics versed in the subject will provide testimony. The news outlet ProPublica has detailed ties between conservative Justice Clarence Thomas and wealthy Republican donor Harlan Crow, including real estate purchases and luxury travel paid for by the Dallas businessman. Additionally, Jane Roberts, the wife of Chief Justice John Roberts, reportedly earned over $10 million in commissions as a legal recruiter from 2007 to 2014, including from law firms that had cases before the Supreme Court. A whistleblower complaint from her former colleague argues that Roberts' commissions were largely due to her husband's role and should be subject to oversight. The complaint also alleges that John Roberts submitted financial disclosure documents identifying his wife's income as salary rather than commission, which the colleague argued is misleading. Again, none of the nine justices will appear at the hearing. Gilead Sciences is facing a trial in Delaware federal court as the U.S. government seeks more than $1 billion from the company for allegedly failing to compensate the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention for discovering that Gilead's HIV treatment drug, Truvada, could help prevent the disease. The government claims that the patents it received for HIV prevention drug regimens cover Gilead's pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP drug regimen for lowering HIV infection risk. Gilead denies the allegations and argues the patents are invalid. The trial marks one of the first times the U.S. government has sued a drug maker to enforce its patent rights. And oh, look at that. With no fanfare, there appears my column. My column this week discusses the use of cash ports, also known as citizenship by investment programs that allow wealthy individuals to purchase citizenship, typically in countries that offer tax and finance anonymity. I'm coining the term cash port, like cash passport. So I need the help of all the Minimum Competence listeners to make sure it really takes the world by storm. These programs, such as those offered by St. Kitts and Nevis, allow individuals to avoid paying taxes in their home countries and to hide their financial dealings. I argue that this practice is not only detrimental to tax revenues, but also facilitates organized crime and terrorism. I call for greater transparency and for imposing penalties on individuals who use these programs to evade taxes. Additionally, I suggest curtailing financial access to tax havens and imposing restrictions on transfers to and from these countries. One recent individual in the news making use of a cash port is also the latest example of a billionaire keeping his money offshore. And that's Harlan Crow. We've learned much about Crow over the past few weeks as a friend and benefactor of Justice Clarence Thomas, a collector of Hitlerania and garden gnome versions of history's greatest monsters, and also, yes, a holder of a cash port to St. Kitts and Nevis. His use of offshore banks will likely obfuscate his financial dealings sufficiently that, barring a confession, the extent to which his largesse was used for Clarence Thomas will never be known. In this, our last story, we have a content warning for references to sex trafficking in the context of Jeffrey Epstein. If you want to hear about it, we get it, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. J.P. Morgan Chase & Co., new owners of First Republic Bank, and Deutsche Bank AG could be held liable for Jeffrey Epstein's sexual abuse if former executive Jess Staley had firsthand knowledge of the financier's sex trafficking venture, according to a U.S. judge. Judge Jed Rakoff said that if Epstein's accusers can prove that Staley knew about the venture, they could show that J.P. Morgan actually knew or recklessly disregarded its existence. The decision concerns two lawsuits against the banks by Epstein's accusers and a lawsuit against J.P. Morgan by the U.S. Virgin Islands. All the lawsuits are scheduled for trial later this year. And with that, thank you so much for listening to Minimum Competence, your daily news podcast for lawyers. If you're looking for more than Minimum Competence, links to further reading on all the topics touched on today are in the show notes. If you have any questions or story suggestions, find us on Mastodon on the esq.social instance. Reviews go a long way towards helping new listeners to find our show. If you have a moment and can leave a rating or review on your podcast player, we'd appreciate it. And if you know someone that might be interested in the story we cover, consider sending them the episode. Minimum Competence is available at minimumcomp.com and wherever you get your finely crafted podcasts. We'll see you back here tomorrow. And until then, remember, cash ports. They're cash 
passports. Tell your friends, streets ahead.